involved in tonight that it is not a surprise to you. We know that you knew this thing was coming. We know that you know the lessons that we'll learn from it. And our prayer is that in the midst of this virus, that you would draw people to yourself, people who were not even thinking about you, people who were not even praying, people who didn't even know what faith was, that when this crisis is over, that thousands and millions of people all over the world would come to know who you are you. as Savior and Lord. You, and so we're here tonight as uh, the men of God, the men of this city, and we're here tonight to discuss with the people of faith how not to lose their faith. Grant us your wisdom as we share one with another. You said if we desired wisdom to ask of you, and you will give it to all men liberally. So we give you this time. We pray for the people of God who've been uh, affected. We pray for the people who know people who've been infected. And we pray now, God, that you would heal. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, tonight we're here, and a crisis has brought us together. And what's the best thing that anybody can do in the midst of a crisis is to look to the hills from whence cometh our help, because all of our help comes from the Lord. I want to start by saying thank you to Mr. Joseph Stroud and the WJYS family for being so kind and opening up their airways tonight, recognizing that this is a pandemic, this is a crisis, and that the church station especially should be the station that addresses this. So thank you, Mr. Stroud. Thank you for all you do. Bishop Horace Smith, we, yes, we know that you are not just a preacher, a bishop in the Lord's church, but you are a medical doctor. So what are we looking at here with this, uh, with this virus? Well, well, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Meeks, and to our friends, uh, Dr. Wilson, Winston, I called you Wilson, boy, uh, and, and, and Dr. Muncie, it's amazing what has brought us together. You used a couple words. I like to reference those words. You used the word global pandemic. Uh, th the word pandemic means what, what the CDC and the uh, WHO announced about three weeks ago. This has now reached pandemic apportion, proportions, which means that there is no place in the world there is no place where we're living in any numbers where this virus has not affected us. You also quoted, however, that God has not been caught unawares. That's right. uh, God knows exactly what's happening. Uh, he's involved in all that we do. And so he has also given us truth and knowledge. Um, as, as you pointed out, I'm, I'm a, a pastor in my calling but also a physician in my training. And, and for years I've dealt with this dilemma in some people's minds, not in mine, uh, the difference between faith and medicine or faith and science. Yeah. To me, there is no difference. Jesus said, know the truth. Yeah. See, truth is not religious. Truth is what really is. And I think that God gives us truth. Truth makes us free. So I think as people of faith, number one, we have to make sure what we're talking, calling faith is based on the truth. So what is the truth? There's a pandemic. Uh, this is not paranoia. This is not something made up. It's real. That's right. uh, the, the numbers tell you that it's real. And two months ago uh, in the U.S., there were no known cases of COVID-19. Two months ago? Two, well, January, the first reported case in this country was in the middle of January, the first case. Uh, the first case in China was about a month preceding that. Uh, in China, they could document it. Uh, again, this was not a man-made virus. It's, it's very clear from knowledge we have looked at this virus. Viruses are, again, they're not bacteria. They're even smaller than bacteria. So they don't even carry DNA. They carry RNA. They have looked at this in its genome or its genetic makeup. And we know this is not artificial. Yeah. We know about artificial viruses, in fact, Many of the advanced countries in the world used to look at uh, biochemical weaponry, looking at how to weaponize viruses. We know the earmarks of it. We know the genome of it. This is a real virus. It's a natural virus, as many have been. So the coronavirus itself is not new. Uh, that class of viruses has been known for years. Uh, the Mars virus, the Sears virus, all those, those are coronaviruses. However, this one is a novel or a new one. So again... 
two and a half months ago, no case in the U.S., but in China it was, and it spread. Um, as of today, I believe there's been over a half million people diagnosed positively with coronavirus. Wow. It's real. In our country, again, uh, we have been hit, and, and again, we must understand it's spreading, especially in the uh, coastal areas, California, New York, but across the U.S. Uh, I think as of today, there was something like 105,000 cases identified in the United States itself. Uh, of those, almost half, almost 50,000 are in New York. Again, New York, very populous. They live in close quarters and so forth. And so it's not surprising. So my, my point there is that this is real. Having said that, uh, God gives us wisdom and knowledge to deal with it. So uh, it has been a challenge to the faith community uh, when a government officials and others have given to us uh, either orders or directives uh, about what we should do to minimize the spread uh, of this virus. And I would just say to all people of faith and to faith leaders that we need to listen carefully to those officials. Right. Uh, and then we need to be prayerful but also mindful of what's going to keep most of us safe. So if you notice uh, in Illinois, in the last four days, uh, the cases have doubled in two days each day. Does it mean that there be there are new people getting the virus? Somewhat. But the great number of new cases are not really new cases. Is that the fact that the virus is already in our community, but we have not tested everybody for it. Right. So there are probably thousands uh, in Illinois who may have the coronavirus who have no symptoms or who have not yet identified their symptomatology. It takes on average about five days to 14 days to have symptoms. Uh, and it can be very mild, it can be like a cold, or it can be very severe. Uh, to where you can't breathe well, you lose oxygen. So it's a real virus. So the, the edicts of the CDC and the IDPH in Illinois, I think we need to hear them very carefully. Uh, on yesterday, our mayor in Chicago right. had to close the lakefront. Well, if you notice that when we began to shelter in place, they didn't close the lakefront. They said you could go for a walk, do these things. But people, some of them did not take it very seriously. So you had large groups gathering together, uh, having what they call coronavirus parties, soccer uh, matches, but it exposes those persons and then they can become carriers to others. So what we're trying to do now with these guidelines is to minimize the spread. The virus is already in our communities, but we can minimize it. The reason that's important, two examples, and I'll, take, uh, I'll stop. Uh, look at Italy and look at New York. Uh, Italy per capita has more hospital beds, more physicians per capita than the U.S. But they have literally been overrun because the virus, it was passed so quickly. So many people got it immediately that they could not handle the load. We don't want that to happen here in our country. Uh, New York right now is on the brink of that. They're struggling with that. So they, they need 40,000 more respirators. It's not a made-up number. It's a real number. As a physician, we see it uh, in our hospitals. Uh, we see cases now that are mild, that are moderate. But what we're afraid of is that we're being overwhelmed with our capacity. So again, the guidelines are, are there. They're stringent, but they are protective. If we can get people to shelter in place, we can get people to, if you're coughing, uh, you should be, uh, again, away from the public in place. You should make sure uh, that you're pr uh, doing what we call social distancing in your family. That's why we're sitting like this So we're tonight. sitting like this yeah. tonight. Uh, these are real measures. And, and again, for the people of faith, we know that we're going to get through this. But the way we get through it is going to be a combination of using wisdom and knowledge uh, a along with compassion. Uh, and let me just say one more thing. Uh, the healthcare professionals who are on the front lines, they need our prayers. Yeah. I've got friends of mine who have been affected by this. I've got people who are doing 20-hour shifts. Mm -hmm. They're overworked. Yeah. They don't have all the equipment that they need. This is not made up. Believe me, these are people who are committed uh, to the welfare of others, and they need our prayers and our support. But again, thank you, uh, Dr. Meeks, and thank you, WJYS, and our colleagues for this tonight. Our host on the bless many people to know more about it and how do we handle this people of faith. Apostolic Faith Church, let me talk to you. This man is a genius. 
Did you hear all of the viruses that he was calling out? This man is a genius. Now, poor Salem is stuck with me. That's but not true. this man is a genius. <laughs> and we thank God for you, Dr. Smith, thank the you. body of Christ. We thank God for you. Now, let's stay on the virus for a little while. Uh, yes, let me stay on the wire for a little while by asking uh, our other esteemed colleagues, Pastor Winston, Pastor Munsey, was it difficult to make a decision to close the church? He mentioned that government officials said to us that we ought to close churches and they were just doing what they had. How difficult was that decision, Doc? Well, um, I, I, didn't, I didn't close my church. All right. Uh, my church is still open. <laughs> uh, the people just st stayed home. That's right. And uh, <laughs> and so the church is people. It's not a building. And so I recognize now that <clears throat> I'm getting the word out via our stream, our live stream. And uh, can I say a few more words? Because oh, you, you know I'm a faith man. Yes, yeah, talk. Um, <clears throat> We're going to have a whole faith section, though. I, I, I mean, I really believe that things like this, when they come up, they really kind of give a picture of how close the church is walking to the world. Mm -hmm. And I think that the Bible that I read, um, it has things like um, oil. Uh, I've seen people um, have the, the preacher uh, bless the oil and take it home and, and get somebody healed. I've seen oil... Uh, being put on handkerchiefs. Uh, I'm talking about the Bible now. Yes. And uh, the people immediately or sometime get healed. I've yes. seen a place where a centurion said, you don't need to come to my house. That's right. Now, you can word. just speak the word from right here, yes. and my servant who has coronavirus Amen. shall be healed. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm talking about things that's got to do with faith. Right. Yes. And I think the church has left faith. And the church is walking, in my opinion, too close to the world. And that when them, something like this comes up, it shouldn't be that the church has to close its doors and so forth and so on. It should be that the church is a is a a a place that can pray and pray down the powers of 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 God onto this 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 virus that's taking place here now, or either prophetically release words that will cause things to happen. That only God can do. Yes. Now yes. I'm I'm I know I'm getting a little stirred up here. That's right. But but I'm seeing Jesus said every tree in you that the Father has not planted shall be rooted up. Yes. And he knew that through us being associated in the world, that that we were going to take on some of the attitudes and opinions of the world. And all you have to do is believe. You can see Job, he said, the things that I feared most has come upon me. In one of the states right now, Oregon or wherever, the suicide rate has increased 23%. Wow. No. Why? Because the news media is constantly telling you about death. People lined up five hours to get tested. Thank God for that. Five hours outside to get tested, it's not because they're going to get sick. They fear dying. Now, the Bible here talks about death. And it talks about, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching now. I shouldn't be doing this. But he said, you know, through fear of death, all their lifetime they were subject to bondage. Yeah. And, and I'm just saying the church got to cross back over and get holy again. Yeah. We got to come back over here where the church is supposed to be so that we can be that, that force that can come against anything in this earth that has come against people's lives to destroy humanity and so forth because right now it's all over the world and even the church has been panicking. So I'm saying I want to tell people right now because I may not get to preach again. No, no, no. I want to tell them Psalm 91. Get it, drive it in twice a day until you get a tree inside. See, a tree is what you believe. And yes. God, his limit is what you believe. And if you believe, that this thing can can come on you, can happen to you. Somebody said, well, you know, no, no, you, you're taking God and trying to use God as a Santa Claus. I've heard that before. God is going to do what he said. Yeah. And he said that he will keep his people. That's what he said. Yeah. Now, what I got to do is I got to preach that. 
I got, when them people came back and 10 of them preached something God didn't say, they died early, the Bible says in Numbers 14, by a plague. Mm -hmm. And I'm just saying right now, he's going to hold us responsible for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and don't back off of it. All if, right. Go, go, well, go, listen, go. no, no, no. You're going to get a chance, a full dose. <sighs> now, listen, those of you who are watching, this is crisis in, this is our faith in crisis. How do we handle this crisis? We handle it with our faith. And we have the faith man here tonight. And Living Word to, knew exactly. I didn't mean to go off. No, no, no. Like you're going to get some more chances. Because I know there's wisdom that you got to use. I understand that. No, no, no. But, but you, I, I, Living Word knew exactly what you were going to say. Okay. You were going to. You were going to start with faith. You are going to end with faith. The, the question, don't make a difference what question you ask, Dr. Winston. I asked the question, Dr. Winston, was it hard to close your church? Faith. Faith is, and this word says that the tree grow inside of you. I can't wait to turn you loose on faith. Dr. Muncy, what do you think about where we are before? Don't do the prophet, prophetic. You're going to do that in a little while. But what do you think about how we've come together tonight? We were already forewarned. Mm. In the world, there's tribulation. My Lord. Ah. We were already forewarned mm. there's an earthquake coming. Mm. Yeah. We were already forewarned there was a famine. Yeah. Now, whose report are we going to believe? Mm. Yeah. The awareness that Dr. Horace Smith gave us is, is very essential. Yeah. We need to know exactly who the giant is. You got to identify the mountain. If Jesus would have said, dead come forth, everybody would have came forth, mm -hmm. but he identified Lazarus. Yeah. We are identified. We have a virus. Yeah. It's bad. It's trying to kill. Mm. Good for you, virus. Now I know who you are. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to speak life with my tongue. I have an authority. Yeah. The world is in darkness, but I'm in light. The last plague in Israel was darkness, yeah. or excuse me, in Egypt. They were in darkness, but the Bible said there was light in Goshen, in Goshen which was across the street. Which means right now we are not CNN, God bless them. We are not Fox, God bless them. We're not NBC, God bless them. We are high, intelligent, anointed men going up against an invisible spirit. But we are the qualifiers because we have the power to speak to that demon and to say, you go where you came from or yeah. go where you have to die. And when I'm going to answer your question about when they said the guidance yes. of our governor that yeah. said shut down the church. We were getting ready to do, you know, uh, you know, our Jesus Easter, everything, you know, everything's getting ready. We, I had to go out there in front of a thousand cast on Thursday night. And it was uh, over thirteen hundred. And that's in Jesus of Nazareth. And I had to tell them. The governor has just said we cannot convene. Well, you, heard, you saw all of the expressions of the children. Of, yeah. You know, we were working three months trying to put something together, you know, for, you know, the, the, the life of Jesus. And, and I walked to my office and I said, man, I didn't feel good about it. Yeah. I just didn't feel good. But I felt good about submitting to Caesar. Right. Because I understand authority. So if I submit to that authority, then I can have authority to go beyond against the prince of powers. And in a few minutes, I know all of us are going to pray, but we're going to do much damage tonight. Absolutely. The airwaves are in big trouble. And I know the statistics of today of Chicago. And thank God for our mayor. Thank God for our governor. Thank God for our officials. But tonight, we're going to do some damage. We're going to pick up some five stones, and we're headed for the giant tonight. Uh, he should have never got us together. He uh, should have never got us no. together. There's a contract getting ready to happen in the next few minutes. And when that contract is made from Salem Baptist Church on the airways of Channel 62, hell is in trouble because we're getting ready to make a contract of agreement. And when two agree, it happens to be four tonight. There is something getting ready to happen to this virus. Well, before I throw it back to Bishop Smith, let me say that we are also streaming 
and uh, there are uh, over 500 or so people last time I looked that's on one stream on Facebook, but we're streaming on YouTube. So those of you who are streaming, I want you to know that you could get ready to ask us a question in a little while. And uh, when the questions go up, we're going to try to answer your questions and alleviate your fears. But I believe that before this telecast is over, when we walk out of this place, they may just tell us that the virus is gone. The, the way y'all speaking up in that's here tonight with, with uh, all of it is. Go ahead, Bishop. Well, well I, hope, I hope that's true, and, and, and I don't want to use the phrase devil advocate. You know, one of my members uh, t texted me and said, Bishop, what we need to do is just believe the word of God. And, and I have to confess, I said to her, I'm always believing the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think, and I, I, I struggle with this. You know, the Lord told Adam and Eve, the day you have this fruit, you're going to surely die. Yeah. That, that edict was given out. It was not totally erased at Calvary. The, the, the power of sin and death is still in this earth, and I don't believe it will be totally eradicated until the Lord comes back. Right. right. Now, does that mean we don't believe in God's healing? I've seen God heal in miraculous ways. But I've also seen people with strong faith, God did not heal. What I want to make sure is that people who, like, like today and this week, uh, pastors and others who have been affected by this virus, I don't believe it's because their faith was weak. I think that Dr. Winston was on a track when he said, we have to ask ourselves as the church, have we really been uniquely walking with God so that we are the salt and the light? Uh, have we become so enamored right. with government, with business, with education that we are not operating in our uniqueness? Because I believe that the church is unique, but the church is not, does not get a pass on all these things. We live in human bodies. These bodies are going to die. I don't care what my faith is. Until the Lord comes back, we're going to die. We don't fear death because we understand God's in charge. So there is this balance we must have between, because uh, I've known people with great faith who got sick. Yeah. And their faith, if I would quantitatively say it's greater than mine. Yeah. So I would say, well, if, I had, if they had more faith, they wouldn't get sick. That's not true. I've had preachers say to me, well, you can't die before your time. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. God gives us I believe that. wisdom, judgment, ability to make a choice. If you make the wrong choice, you will pay for it. So I don't want to paint such a broad swath that people who are on the front lines, again, a couple of my friends who are on the respirator right now, I don't believe, I think they were doing their duty. They were saving lives, and yet they are now dealing with it. I don't want to minimize what they've done and say, well, if they had more faith, they would not have had it. I don't believe that. I, I believe that God has a wisdom beyond ours. Our faith must be resilient, but we must also deal with people in the realm of this world, which is sin. You mentioned it again, uh, Dr. Muncy, that in the world you will have tribulation, yes. but be of good cheer. Yes, I have overcome the world. So there has to be some balance between what we call faith application, what God is doing, and yet our choices. So I think, again, our choices are really important. So I, I, I want to end when we get ready to end in about 30 minutes with faith. And so, Pastor Muncy, what do you see as it relates to the, prophet, the prophecy in this moment? What, are, are we in a yeah. prophetic moment? I, I, think, I think all four of us, and, and I want to give great credit to the body of ministers that are in the Chicagoland area. Yeah. Every yeah. minister is important. Yeah. Don't look at this television set and say, there's the four, and why them, et cetera. We, we were just picked, yeah. and you could have been here too. So I want, I want to say to every minister, and I want to say to every doctor and every nurse and every ambulance, because I believe that all the medical society, help me out, doctor, if I'm wrong here, I believe they are the backside of Calvary. They are ministers. I believe that doc doctors and hospitals are the backside of Calvary. Mm -hmm. By his stripes, yes. we shall be healed. So, so I believe at this moment, I'm answering your question, I, I want to say to everyone that, and I also believe very strongly what Dr. Horace Smith said about when it comes to sickness. We're not bulletproof. Some of us are going to get sick. Mm -hmm. But the only reason why sickness comes to a believer so they can have a testimony. Mm. And I'm going to go a step further. You can straighten right. me out after uh, mm. service here, all of you, because you got great theology. 
I don't believe anybody goes to heaven sick. I believe they have to go through the healing process. I don't, God doesn't read death certificates. And if you have faith and you're dying with cancer and you have faith, there's a healing coming before you go into the next life. Mm. So strong faith doesn't necessarily mean that you will not get the virus or you will not get sick, but you must stand strong to believe yes. God's got something better yes. for me. Now, here's what I believe. Isn't it interesting that this virus has hit full bore, so to speak, uh, right now at Passover season? Wow. Mm. Isn't it interesting that right now, thousands of years ago, Israel was in Egypt getting ready to be delivered. Yeah. And this was probably today, right now, right before Easter, yeah. Passover, probably the dark days. That was the last plague. I believe, I believe with all of my heart that God is getting ready to dispatch a Passover angel. Right on time. And I can prove it. Mm. Before Joshua could go to the promised land, he stopped and said, we need to honor Passover. We need to honor, e we need to honor Easter. Yeah. The next day, there was an angel on the road. Joshua said, hey, who are you? He said, I'm here to lead you to the promised land. It's Passover. I've been sent. Mm. When Jesus was at the point of saying, I'm not going to drink this cup. I've decided to change my mind. I'm bleeding through my pores. My disciples are sleeping. I'm in Gethsemane, and he's coming to kiss me, to betray me. I don't want to take this cup. I can't take it. I mean, I've done everything you wanted, Father, but I just cannot take the fact that my best friend's going to kiss me. I'll be arrested. They're going to put a crown of thorns on my head. They're going to beat the flesh off my back. They're going to put nails in my hand. I don't want to drink the cup. That's right. That and was the Bible says a Passover angel yeah. came down to strengthen him. Yeah. When Peter was ready and he was going to be, he, Herod said, I'm going to kill you. I killed James yesterday, but I'm going to wait a couple days because it's Passover. That's right. And Peter was in prison. I'm telling everybody, this disease may have captured you and put you in to a bondage thinking. But there's a Passover angel coming right. uh, to set you free. Uh, I believe at this moment, at this moment, it, that something is getting ready to happen over this earth. God's got to get glory out of this. Yeah. Yeah. God's got to get glory out of this. And I believe, now here I go, I'm, I'm, I, I got Bill Winston over here on my left side, six foot apart, but man, he feel, I feel like he's in my mouth with his word. Yeah. I'm going to call things that are not as though they were, yeah. and I'm going to believe there's going to be a supernatural miracle that's going to happen to our nation. Yeah. That's yeah. Because it is Passover. And it would, not, it would not surprise me if something happens between now and Easter. Oh, yeah. Lord. That all of a sudden the statistics go down. And all of a sudden we start saying, well, government, will you let us have church? Because I'm going to tell you right now, I can't wait to have church. <laughs> I've already got the David thing in me. Well, I was glad when they said it in me. Let us have church. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I miss my church. So I believe. I believe this with all of my heart. I believe that there's a Passover angel. One other thing, uh, and Brother Meeks, I really, Dr. Meeks, thank you for this time. I'll do this short. I believe, I believe so strong that we, the church, had better get it right. Because yes. when he said, I'll heal the land, yeah. He talked to the church and said, quit yeah. bickering, quit yeah. being yeah. prejudiced, quit yeah. being yeah. argumental. Don't worry about Republicans and Democrats. Get your act together. Yes. Because I'm not listening to the world. Yeah. I need you as the church. For my people, what you're called by my name, my name will right. humble themselves and turn right. Right. from their wicked jealousy and gossip and competitiveness and, and, and saying, I'm right and you're wrong, but Fall on our knees, God oh, said, God. I'll heal the land. Yeah. He never did say that. He never said in his word that Caesar has to do it. Yeah. Government has to do it. He said, you do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to say, and this is the last thing I'm going to say. I hope I'm answering the question because no, no, I'm all ahead. fired up here. Excuse me. Because I'm sitting next to you all. <laughs> the anointing is just so heavy here. God bless his name. Yeah. I want to I say that every person, wherever you are, the reason why you live where you live 
on your block. Is that the camera? Hey, you. I'm talking to you. The reason why you live where you live is because you are the light to that block. Mm. Take authority over that block. Take authority over that apartment complex yes. and start believing because something's getting ready to happen in the next few hours or the next few days because it's pass over. Mm. Go ahead because I'm getting ready to turn Dr. Winston. Well, I, I'm going to yield to, to, to my brothers, but I, I think one note that you made on this, I, we did a special with some ministers last week, and they asked me to participate. I said these words that perhaps, as you've said and what Dr. Winston has said, it really is the church. Yeah. And, and let's, let's go a, a step further. It's not only the church. It's the church's role to call the world. If we are divided, if we can't get together, we cannot expect people to believe because they look and say, well, this one's against this one, this one's against that one. And I use the word humane. The Bible says, from one blood, he made us all. Yeah. And sometimes I think that something like this is a shameful thing, but it, it humbles us to realize, hey, we need everybody. We need one another. Absolutely. We need to treat each other right at all times because we are all made in the image of a God that loves us all. We as leaders must find a way to break down the barriers, That's right. to cross over the dominations, to understand this is a human being. This is a soul. Our job is to unite souls. Well, does it take a virus to get us to be humane to each other, not to be judgmental, to share our resources, to understand we're in the same boat? Again, pandemic, there's not a, of the 7 billion people on this planet, who has had anything else in their mind but this pandemic? Right, right. Every human being with any sensibility now deal with the same thing. I, I hope it will draw us together. Doesn't make a difference who put the hole in the boat. <laughs> we all in it now. And same water boat. and water's coming in, and we all have to help. So a member of Living Word comes to Pastor Bill Winston and said, Pastor, pestilence is in the land. People are going crazy. We're losing our jobs taking away our, our, our 401k, I'm about to give up. I'm about to lose hope. What do you tell people who are watching us? There are over 800 people now who are on this one Facebook stream, not forgetting the people that are on TV. Other platforms, right? Other platforms. What do we tell people who are losing their faith? Take take your time and go for it. Now, this is not I'm, – I'm speaking now mainly to the church. I'm That's right, to the church. To members of the body of Christ. <clears throat> We have to first see ourselves the way God sees us. Mm. And we are here as ambassadors for Christ. That's right. Right. This is what we hear. We represent the government of God, and we're here to take care of diplomatic business. Right. Yeah. Now, as people here coming here, God is our provider. That's right. He That's is right. our source and our sustainer. Not so much of we've got to rely on the job to keep us. Now, I'm, I'm saying something uh -oh, here now. Uh -oh. Because I said this call things. I told them the last Sunday that we had service. I said, now, you go into the grocery store and don't see any toilet paper. <laughs> don't panic. Don't panic. Because God provides for you even toilet paper. And I said, now what you do is call for it. Mm. Call for it. Now, because as an ambassador, I'm going to another nation, and I don't have to live on the level of that nation. That's right. I live on the level of the home government that sent me. That's mm. right. I said, so call for it. So I got a letter the next day, it was email. She said, I went. I discovered when I got home, we didn't have any toilet paper. Oh. Went to the store. Toilet paper's gone. I said, Pastor said, call it. Call it. So I said, toilet paper, <laughs> come to me now. That's good. Uh, she said, in Jesus' name, she said, I got home, got a call from Mama. Mama said, Sister girl hey. has a lot of toilet paper she just bought. Do you need some? Mm. And brought the toilet paper over. She took a big picture of it and sent it to me by email. Mm, mm. Now, what am I saying here? I'm saying God cautions us. He said, look not at the things that are seen, but at the things that are not, not seen. seen. For right. the things that are seen are temporal. Mm. 
but the things that are not seen are eternal. eternal. Yeah. Now, I'm saying that because when I came to Chicago, I came with $200. And as I came with $200, God said, you got plenty. Mm -hmm. And what I had to do is sow my way out of the financial condition I was in. Mm -hmm. And I did it. And look what we own now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying I'm still sowing. Because God has the provisions right. already provided. But the way that he gets them to you is through seed. Right. Yeah. So I'm saying to anybody right now, if you're getting laid off, first, don't panic. Don't the panic. Bible says be anxious for nothing. nothing. Right. But in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. Let it be known to God. The Holy Ghost will tell you what to do, guaranteed. During this mm. time, God will make it so you never knew that you was laid off. Mm. He will make it so that he will provide for you no matter what. So that's my answer to Pastor it. Winston. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead, Pastor. <laughs> Pastor Winston, <laughs> would you agree that fear can attract just as faith can attract? Absolutely. Every time. And why is it when you list in Revelations 21 the list that's going to hell, yeah. and the first one is fearful. Fear. And people are saying, that one's going to hell, that one's going to hell. Fearful. That's my fears. Fear. fear. Mm. The next one is unbelief. unbelief. When you exactly fear, right. you don't believe. Mm. If you fear, you imagine and you, it, it, you're it, attracted it to it. It attracts it. Sickness is coming. Yep. Uh, I got a headache. Oh, yep. my God. I must have, I must have. I must, I must have it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And fear says, keep speaking it. Keep speaking it. Heart palpitations. But all faith. Of that. Mm -hmm. Faith. If you speak, Come on, if God. you speak Come and on. decree a thing, Come on, God. as people of God, we can speak and say, God, in the name of Jesus. And I'm asking everyone that's watching, uh, uh, Dr. Meeks yeah. and, and Bishop Horace Smith, Every one of you, quit talking negative. My Death in right. life is in your tongue. That's right. Quit agreeing with everybody that doesn't have the word of God. You are light. You're an ambassador. You're a royal priesthood. You're a chosen generation. Speak life. As an ambassador, go ahead, go ahead. I am limited to say what my constitution says. Yeah, yeah. That's very good. I am not <laughs> supposed to say anything else, yeah. no matter what I see. That's right. Let me say to everybody that's watching, also quit looking at news 24-7. <laughs> Thank that's you. Right. I Thank mean, you. you have to look at news to be informed, but not from the time you get up until right. the time you go to bed, because all they're doing is regurgitating these old negative facts. Those of you who are online or on stream on the platform and you have a question, you can ask that question now. One of the persons that are on this panel, we will do our best to tackle it, especially as it relates to believers' faith. Those of you who are from uh, churches and you have a particular need, let your church know right. what your need yeah. is. Yes. Your, we want to know what it is you need and how it is that we can help you. Those of you who are not in a church, let a church know what your need is. But that's a good reason to want to be in the church because we never know when the next crisis or the next family is going to come. And we're not going to turn away people that have a need, but if we see in line some faithful people who've been coming every week, I can guarantee you that they're going to get put close to the front. Now, they're going to get close to the front, but we ain't going to turn you away either. I want you to know that. So you need to be a part of a church so that when there is a famine in the land, yes. you can have a place that you could go to know that you're going to get your needs met. But those of you with a need, you're at home, you're watching, stop looking at all of this negative. Stop looking at so much yeah. news, and whatever the need is, please let somebody know. We want to see what we can do to help with your needs. And so give me a question on the screen, and uh, while we are waiting on that question to come to the screen, uh, let me ask, uh, how have the members of your church responded to some of the things? What are some of the things that your church is doing to help people in this time of famine? We, uh, we um we started uh, having a drive-through of giving elements of communion ah. so that on Sunday they would take communion with us on streaming. Yeah. Let me tell you, my streaming, my statistics have tripled. Mm. I mean, people are really, mm. 
And I'll tell you, I want to tell all the, I want to tell everybody. Can I say this? You can say it. Whatever church you belong to, whatever church you belong to, get your ties Support to that it. church. Yes, indeed. Yes. The church cannot be weak at this moment. No. The stimulus package has been made for corporations and people. That's wonderful. But we must support the church. Is that all right, uh, uh, Brother Meeks, that I say Absolutely. that? Absolutely. I'm looking and, at a question. And Go so ahead. the people been coming, we've been given elements of yes. communion. Yeah. They've been driving through. We've yes. been very, uh, just like you, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Smith, we've yes. been very sanitized about it. Sure. We use gloves. Yes. Uh, we have masks on. Yes. They drive up. We make sure that everything is medically and sure. guidance proof as best we can. So we give them as many as they need. Ironically, they have given us prayer request cards. Yes. So I, you know, I, I every Wednesday night I lower the cross and I put the prayer request cards on the cross during Lent season. Mm -hmm. So that's one way we have responded to the people. Uh, Pastor, uh, my youth department comes on behind me on streaming and they do a youth service. No. Now we're going to do a children's Sunday school on our streaming. Yes. So this may be an idea for. Whoever, as long as we are in this place. But I want to say, thank God, I have seen the church come. Step up together. I'm so proud of the church. Yes, yes. I'm not, I'm not, I, if we said anything that says, well, man, you're kind of uh, getting us in shape here. I want to first say I am proud of the church. I'm proud of all the backsliders that's come back. I'm yeah. proud Amen. of people who are getting saved. That's right. It is working for the good, I hope, good. can I say this? I hope the devil <laughs> knew what he was doing <laughs> when he decided to do this. Yeah. And church. did he know what was getting ready to happen? Because you know. something big is getting ready. <laughs> I'm, seeing, ahead, I'm seeing on television, on major uh, networks with uh, primetime programming. Yes. Right in the yes. middle of that, yes. here comes Franklin Graham calling oh, for I souls to be saved. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that's what we all ought to be. We've yeah. been getting souls. The number has just absolutely right. just <laughs> skyrocketed <laughs> since we went on and at the end start calling for souls to be saved. People are getting saved. I'm telling you. Getting <laughs> and not only numbers. even better than yes. Franklin Graham, which I applaud yep. them, yep. even these newscasters, huh. I've got people at the hospital calling me and saying, look, Pray for the hospital. Gotcha. Pray. People who before never acknowledged God yep. are now even on national that television, other places. Yeah. They understand. Somebody said this years ago. There's no atheist in foxholes. Mm. When you see your mortality, yes. your humanness cries out, God, yes. Yes. help us. And you turn to the people whom God has put into the earth to be the church to say, pray for us. I think it's going to be a great revival. Tremendous uptick in go. people of God You're because right. yes. when you understand right. our limitations, yeah. we need God to help us. So let me let me give put, you this question. Put, somebody has asked more real quick. Chairs out. Yeah, put that's chairs right. Out. Let me let me give you this question. Somebody said, "Can you give us some verses that we can meditate on during this crisis?" So here's my verse: God has not given us the spirit of fear, yeah. but of power and of Second love Timothy, and of a sound, a sound mind. Second Timothy one seven. Give us some scriptures. I, I like the one that that Dr. Winston gave us at the very beginning. Uh, Psalm 91. Psalm 91. The, 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 the Lord is, is our dwelling place. The yes. Lord Secret is our place. habitation. Yes. Refuge. Yes. Uh, he says four things in that Psalm uh, 91 and 27. He says, I want to be in the house of God. Mm -hmm. I want to be in the temple of God. Mm -hmm. I want to be in the pavilion of God. Mm -hmm. And I want to be in the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. It says all those things mean we need to rush to mm -hmm. the place where God is. Mm -hmm. He said, you're going to be blessed. You will have no pestilence because you have made the Lord your habitation. Right. You said that the church is not the building. Yep. We need to let the Holy Spirit inhabit us, and mm. we inhabit him. Psalm 91, Psalm 27, mm. Psalm 23, there's safety and there's peace. Uh, also, go ahead, also, Pastor. Also, Proverbs chapter 4 mm. and verse 20. Attend to my words, incline thine ears to my sayings. Yeah. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For their life to those that find them, and health and medicine to all their flesh. Wow. So <laughs> Exodus, uh, if you want to study Exodus, what the Passover angel is going to do, yeah. it, it's in the 23rd chapter. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. And there's seven things the angel does. The angel mm -hmm. destroys the enemy, brings prosperity, and it says take sickness out of the midst mm -hmm. of thee. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. All right, so, here's another question. Do you believe, do you believe that COVID-19 is a warning 
from our Heavenly Father? I think um, whenever anything comes like this, I think it, it does serve to be a warning to us. It serves to be a warning to people who are not saved that they need to get saved. Uh, it serves to be a warning to the church mm. that they need to wake up in their authority. Right. Yes. It serves to be a warning that, um, you know, just because you feel you're doing everything right, it doesn't mean that pestilence can't come. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the yeah. areas that you may be occupying. So I, I think in a way it does serve as a, as a warning, but a wake-up call for yeah. the church. I think the church can use this hour to manifest the kingdom of God like never before. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, 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 I'm looking at it. I don't call it f from, the, from the Lord. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's something from the pit of hell. But I think the church needs to wake up in our authority because like you said, I really believe we can stand in an apostolic alliance yeah. and call anything down. Yeah. that God didn't send to this earth. This will be encouraging to that question, mm -hmm. all right? Because we could get on theology of yeah. this and that, and there's enough Old Testament that God is a participant in some of this. Absolutely. But I want to say this. Mm -hmm. The enemy, God sits there and says, devil, you go first. Mm -hmm. God always says that. Mm -hmm. you, go mm -hmm. you go first. You do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. For the enemy shall come in like a flood. God raises up a standard. There may be weeping that endureth for the night, but joy comes in the morning. In other words, God is saying, is that the best you got? Here I come. Here I come. And so as, as, as pastor has declared, this is nothing more than for all of us to reach up and grab a testimony and be an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and, and say, in Jesus' name, the standard's getting bet ready to be raised. And I'll tell you what, I'm raising the standard this Easter and Holy Week yeah. because well, this is a very important time to God. God says, this is my season, not man's, not the church's. This is my feast, my time. So I believe I, it's God's go on thing here. That You remember when the plagues finished, the transfer took place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah. And I'm saying, I believe. That's right. You know, he put two trillion, but that T stood for transfer. <laughs> and I believe that there's going to be transfer. a transfer during all of this. Church waking up, something is going to happen, and this church is going to get all it needs. I mean, they're going to operate with a no-budget anointing. And, and this money is going to be used to take this gospel all over the world. I think that COVID-19 is too big for us to think that God ain't saying nothing. That's right. That's <laughs> God, oh, God, God never, God never wasted anything. Yeah. And he wouldn't let nothing that big come in the land for him not to be saying Say nothing. Something. He just said something come big come in the land, good. but I ain't saying That's nothing. Very good. We know that God is up to something. We know that he's saying something. He's saying get closer to your family. He's yeah. saying get closer mm -hmm. to your relatives. Yeah. He's saying get closer to the elderly people. Right. He's saying church people get closer. He's saying stop being bitter, stop being jealous, stop criticizing. Mm -hmm. He's saying learn to work together. I mean, God never wastes anything. It ain't nothing wasted. So God is always saying something. Yes. And so so those of you with uh, questions, we are on about nine, 10 more minutes. You can give us your questions. Dr. Her Dr. Horace, how do you continue to balance your faith in your medical profession? Well, the balance is because I belong to him. Uh, mm -hmm. Bishop Holly, my first teacher, Bishop Brazier, uh, my, my mentor, taught me that I have one life. And I used to struggle with this whole issue of faith versus medicine, and they showed me there is, no, there is no incongruity. I said this earlier. I believe that I'm called to be a minister, whether it's of the body or of the soul, because he made us body, soul, and spirit. So I don't see a conflict. I, I think that the problem comes in with medicine. Oftentimes, we who are in science, we're very arrogant. I think that the difference between them and, and us is that if you're a believer, you give God the glory. That's right. That's I have right. been in emergency rooms. I've been in surgeries. I've been uh, under chemotherapy protocols and seen God do things. And my friends will tell me and say to me, you're going to say God did it. I say, okay, who do you say did it? And they say, well, we don't understand. I say, well, I have better understanding than you have. It was the Lord. That's good. So, so again, I'm, I'm positioned, and so I don't see a conflict at all. Right. I, I am a, wherever I go, I am ministering health and wholeness to the body of Christ and to the entire world. That's the call on my life. Thank I believe, God. I believe a believer physician 
is an apostle of healing. Ooh. I really believe that. Absolutely. Now, right. I believe when, when we first Glory. purchased that mall, that shop mall here in Forest yeah. Park, people, well, what is a preacher doing with a mall? Yeah. You, you follow what I'm saying? Sure. So it's faith and the marketplace. Wow. You can't separate the two. And when I was in government, people were asking the same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How could a preacher be in government? Uh, that's because now, now you understand because you see now that we're in a crisis, we have to come under that authority. Yeah. So why shouldn't the authority be a godly authority? Look, it. somebody asked, how do we explain this, Pastor, to our children? How do we explain what's going on right now to kids? Yeah. This is very important that you as a believer, now we're talking to believers. Right. You should be the example to tell those children, don't worry, God's got under th everything under control. They, they, are, they are, as parents, passed down the faith mm. because they're watching how we handle it. And I want to say to someone right now, you're the light in your house. Yeah. The preacher may not be there in your living room, but you are the light. I'd like to say this, Solomon was the wisest man. He did something that really impressed God. He built a house for God. Mm. Then God made a deal with him. He said, when the locust comes, yes. when the pestilence come, when there is no rain, go to the house. Make sure everything is all right. That's where we get Second Chronicles 7, 14. Yeah, yeah. And I just want to give us a 30-second salutation. I stayed up most of Monday night praying. And I circulated the globe on my iPad of what mm. was happening everywhere. I tried to figure out what was happening in Zambwe. Yes, what would yes, people yes, say? Yes. So I, I couldn't sleep, so I, I prayed. Holy Spirit said these words. Everybody's got their own salutation. Yeah, that's right. And I hope that it blends in. But God said, everybody better wake up. And that, that's a scriptural verse, too, by the way, in Romans. It's high time to wake out of sleep. Right. God said, tell the people they better pray. Get back to prayer. Number two. Forsake not the assemblies of yourselves mm -hmm. as you see the day approaching. Yep. And number Hebrews three, you better tell my people to quit robbing me right. and stealing from me because mm. I'm the one that gave them the power to get wealth in the first place. Can I just put a tagline on the whole issue of wealth? Because I know pastors are very squeamish about money. I, I've said this for years now. The church needs to change the narrative about money. We've allowed the world to make us squeamish. Because they say money is carnal. People of God need to know in this day and time, money is a kingdom resource. We must have it because we are the people in the ages of God in times like this mm -hmm. to reach out to others and say, come to us. We will help you. So when you sow, as you talked about that when you first came to Chicago, when you give, it's not because the minister wants your money. God is is honored when we honor him because he gave us what we have. He will multiply it back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. It's not carnal. It is spiritual. The church needs to understand that we need to be positioned materialistically to use it as a kingdom resource Absolutely. against the enemy. And so, yes, you belong to a church. You should be a tither. You should be a generous giver. You should do it, especially at this time. Because that's what God needs the church to stand tall right. and to answer these questions for and say, look at us. We have what we need. Let me say this. Uh, a son of mine, Reverend Carey, all the way in Detroit, asked the question, how can the church hand out resources and the members stay protected? I simply want to say, Reverend Carey, that one of the things the church can do is put bags of food in the parking lot of the church and let people come by and pick it up. And uh, you don't have to stand there and give anybody anything. People will come and they'll get that food. Let me say this, because I don't want us to lose the time yes. because we're down to a few minutes. We have to get ready to pray for those people who are under Unemployed. I'm getting a lot of questions about yes. how do you keep your faith when you're unemployed. I didn't ask that because Pastor Winston already said God is our source. Mm. And that's how we keep it. Go ahead. And, and you can also get in this word of God yes. and see what it says about you having provision Thank you, independent Glory. of what the environment is around you. See what it says about that. Mm -hmm. Because what you see, you believe. And what you believe, God delivers. Yeah, and yeah. so what we have to do is see something the world can't see, then we can have something the world can't have. Well, those of you who are watching, those of you who are online, I want you to know that Monday at 6 o'clock, 
uh, Central Time. Uh, I'll be right back here with a, another group. Uh, they might not be as esteemed as this group, but I'll be right back here Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> Thursday, and Friday. Uh, but this is a night where we wanted to start out with dealing with faith in crisis. And I just want to ask these men of God yeah. to just take uh, a minute, uh, a minute mm. to pray for people in whatever state they're in, whatever condition, yeah. to know you all that God is going to work it out. Let me just bow my head in prayer. I pray Hallelujah. right now for every one of the first responders, men and women, people of faith who are at the front line. God, in the name of Jesus, Glorify undergird us. them, protect them, and bless them. And, Lord, give them wisdom beyond their training. Give them, Lord God, favor as they touch, as they reach out. They'll be effective and healing your people. Bless those who are, oh, God, terrified by this virus. Let them know that greater is he that's in us. Yeah. Help us to reach out as a community of faith believers together, not only in Chicago, Illinois, and in the U.S., but around this world that you love. Bless us to be effective in Jesus' name. And, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, I pray for those in leadership. Yeah. The governors, the ones in, in leadership in Washington. Yes. I pray for yes. those who are in our local uh, municipalities and, and towns. I the pray for God. wisdom, Lord, Jesus. that you'll give them wisdom in terms of how to take care of those cases that have been traumatized, those people that have been on the verge, Lord God, of, of losing everything, Lord, because of this, this, this virus. Father, I pray mm. yeah. that you give them solutions. Give them concepts, insights, and ideas yes. as to what to do, even to the point of raising up something, even if it's a medication yeah. that, oh Lord, people didn't even know that was even it, among medication. But Do somehow it. you reveal something that as quickly as this yeah. thing came up, that's as quickly as it's Whoa. going down. That's right. Now we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Can we stand? Yeah. God. yeah we yeah. look directly into the house, all four of us, and declare. Mm. Let us just pray this prayer. Pray. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. In the yeah. name of Jesus. Jesus. Healing. Healing. Prosperity. 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 The power of God. The power of God. Is coming through this television it's set. It's coming through this television, television set. Airways. And it's coming to you. And, and it's, it's coming, coming to you. Right now. Right now. And in the name of Jesus. And in the name, in the name of, Jesus. of Jesus. Peace. 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 In Jesus' name. In, in Jesus. Jesus' name. So I'll tell you what it'll be a kick. It's 10 seconds left. Let's uh, go off singing this song. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He got the whole world in his hands. He got you and me, brother. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. Well, I see that they've decided to give us continual time on TV, so have a seat, everybody, and uh, sit on down, and they're going to let us know when we're no longer on TV. This is a message. We're off the air. This is a message of uh, faith. And we just thank the Lord for it. Are we off? All we're right. off. All right. We were going to start all over again. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. We had 1,200 people on our Facebook just on, feed. Just on that Facebook. That's on this Facebook feed. You had feed. hundreds of thousands. Yep. On just, just on Salem's Facebook page, it was 1,200 people. Uh, we drove everybody to the TV. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, and that's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're we <laughs> done. Fantastic Thank job. Oh, man. We, Thank we you. give the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glory. Glory.